like 15 people at this conference. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't think he would meet a lot of people with no last name. I mean, I bet if you went to Germany, you'd meet people with your last name. Well, no, because I spell it wrong. I don't do the traditional German spelling. Oh, it's weird. I mean, I'd be able to find them because they'd have the name on it. And I'd be like, yes. I'm new, but American. I decline to accept the end of man. A reason for living was to get ready to stay dead a long time. I heard that my mother is dead. I wish, I wish I had time to let her die. It takes two people to make you and one people to die. That's how the world is going to end. Life was created in the valleys. It blew up into the hills on the old terrors, the old lust, the old despairs. That's why you must walk up the hills so you can ride down. It is easy enough to say that man is immortal simply because he will endure. That when the last ding-dong of doom has clanged and faded from the last worthless rock, hanging tideless in the last red and dying evening, that even then there will still be one more sound, that of his puny, inexhaustible voice, still talking. But you can't be alive forever. You always were alive long before you have exhausted the possibilities of living. I wish I had time to let her die. I wish I had time to wish I had. It is because the wild and outraged earth too soon, too soon, too soon. It's not that I wouldn't and will not. It's that it is too soon. Too soon. Too soon. It is as though the space between us were time. An irrevocable quality. The very old men, some of them in their brushed confederate uniforms, on the porch and the lawn, talking of Miss Emily, as if she had been a contemporary of theirs, believing that they had danced with her and courted her, perhaps. Confusing time with its mathematical progression, as the old do, to whom all the past is not a diminishing road, but instead a huge meadow which no winter ever quite touches, divided from them now by the narrow bottleneck of the most recent decade of years. Too soon, too soon. I refuse to accept this. I believe that man will not merely endure, he will prevail. That would be nice. It would be nice if he could just ravel out into time. Too soon, too soon. I give you the mausoleum of all hope and desire. Not that you may remember time, but that you might forget it now and then for a moment and now spend all your breath trying to conquer it. It is as though the time, no longer running straight before us in a diminishing line, now runs parallel between us, like a looping stream. The distance between the doubling accretion of the thread and not the interval between. He is immortal not because he alone among creatures has an inexhaustible voice, but because he has a soul, a spirit capable of compassion and sacrifice and endurance. Because no battle is ever won, they are not even fought. The field only reveals to man his own folly and despair, and victory is an illusion of philosophers and fools. You are contemplating apotheosis in which a temporary state of mind will become symmetrical above the flesh, aware both of itself and of the flesh. It will not quite discard you. You will not even be dead. You cannot bear to think that someday it will no longer hurt you. You seem to regard it as merely as an experience that will whiten your hair overnight, so to speak, without altering your appearance. It is hard believing to think that a love or sorrow is a bond purchased without design and which matures willy-nilly and is recalled without warning. It's not despair until time. It's not even time until it was. And now the long sleep that outlasts love, that conquers even the grimace of love, had cuckolded him. The poet's, the writer's duty is to write about these things. It is his privilege to help man endure by lifting his heart, by reminding him of the courage and honor 
and hope and pride and compassion and pity and sacrifice which have been the glory of his past. And that all must be somewhere. All that could not have been invented and created just to be thrown away. And yet don't want to just keep things, hold them. It wants to use them again. If happy I can be, I will. If suffer I must, I can. I see the beginning, and now I see the ending. The poet's voice need not merely be the record of man, it can be one of the props, the pillars to help him endure and prevail.